Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel where I talk about electrical work and electrical calculations. So if you work in the electrical industry here in the UK, I hope there's something here on my channel for you. In this video, I thought I'd talk a little bit about protective bonding. So if you're ever filling out the details on an electrical certificate or an EICR, um, you'll see the most common examples of what we mean by extraneous conductive part that needs to be bonded. So things like gas pipes, water pipes, structural steel, lightning protection, um, things like oil heating pipe work where you've got an oil tank outside. So if you're out in the country, like where I am here today some properties will have an oil tank and then they'll have a pipe that comes into the property that would need to be bonded and then on the electrical certificate you'll see a, a tick box that says other so what other types of extraneous conductive parts are there that you may need to think about bonding well to understand this we really need to know what we mean by the word extraneous conductive part an extraneous conductive part is a conductive part that's not part of the electrical installation but has the ability to introduce an earth potential so Typically, that would be something that comes out of the ground. So if you think about uh, a water pipe or a gas pipe that comes out of the ground, that would be an extraneous conductive part because it has the ability to introduce enough potential into the property. Now, it was clarified in the 18th edition recently that where a water main enters a property in plastic, it doesn't need to be bonded. Um, but what we need to bear in mind is, is if the, that is then converted into copper and then that gets in contact with the ground, say it goes underground or it's in contact with the ground, that would then be an extraneous conductive part and it would need to be bonded. So it's worth bearing that in mind. Another type of extraneous conductive part is a conductive part that is common between more than one property. So if you've got a block of flats and you've got pipe work that runs between each property that's going to be an extraneous conductive part not least because it's probably connected to the earthing system in the adjacent property so if you've got a block of flats and you've got communal heating pipe work that runs between all the properties that's going to be an extraneous conductive part so there's two types of extraneous conductive part that we tend to come across most mostly it's conductive parts that come out of the ground or in contact with the ground but also conductive parts that run between more than one property so it's really worth bearing that in mind when you're deciding what needs to be bonded and what doesn't so if you're ever unsure of what needs to be bonded and what doesn't have a look in BS761 there's a list in there of types of conductive part extraneous conductive parts and exposed conductive parts now I talk in more detail about some of the changes in amendment 2 of the 18th edition and if you haven't seen that video yet I'll put a link up at the top of the screen